I think we can make a, a start to the meeting then. Um, welcome to this virtual meeting of Kensington and Chelsea uh, Council's Planning Committee. Uh, this evening meeting is held in accordance with government regulations allowing councils to hold virtual meetings. I'm Councillor James Husband, Chairman of the Committee, and I'm joined by four of my fellow councillors. Um, perhaps we can go around and just quickly introduce ourselves. So perhaps if we can start with uh, Councillor Tom Bennett. Tom? Yes, good evening, everybody. I'm Councillor Tom Bennett, Councillor for Redcliffe Ward. That's good, thank you. And uh, we're also uh, joined by um, Councillor Emma Dent Code. Uh, Emma? Um, thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, Councillor Emma Dent Code uh, for um, Goldborn Ward standing in. Um, I'm um, uh, for Mobakhtia, who's unwell. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, that's understood. Thank you very much. Um, and then Councillor Waller Idris. Waller? Um, Good evening, everyone. Uh, Councillor Wala Idris. I am councillor for Brompton and Hanstown Ward and also one of the vice chairs uh, for planning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, finally, uh, Councillor Charles O'Connor. Charles. Good evening, Councillor Charles O'Connor, Holland Ward, also vice chairman of the committee. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now, it will be the five of us who are making the decision on the application before us this evening. We're also joined by officers who will be advising us. Now, the presenting officer this evening um, is going to be Martin Lomas. Martin, would you like to just come up briefly on screen and say hello? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, Martin Lomas. I'm the Strategic Developments Team Leader in the Development Management Team. Great, thank you. And uh, the officer team this evening is, is led by Derek Taylor. Derek, uh, you're with us, yeah? Um, yes, good, good evening, Chairman. My name is Derek Taylor, and I'm assisting you this evening as the uh, senior officer um, for, the, for the application. Great, thank you. And uh, just to say, if, if any other officers need to speak during the evening, then I will introduce them and explain exactly who they are. If I could ask everybody, please, um, to um, stay on mute with video off unless you are invited to speak. It, it, it will help the uh, it will help the uh, the broadcast. Um, finally, I'd like to remind everyone that all councillors have received the officers' report, the representations and also the addendum report, which has been circulated. Okay, um, so if we can uh, now move on to the uh, formal agenda. Um, now, apologies for absence. Um, as Councillor Dent Code said, unfortunately, Councillor Bakhtiar um, hasn't been feeling very well. So uh, Councillor Dent Code has stepped in as his replacement, and that is actually provided for in, in the way that the rules of the of the committee work. So that's that's completely in order. So everyone else is 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 here in the usual way. Are there any declarations of interest, please? No. OK. Are there any other declarations? No. OK. In that case, if we can just uh, briefly address, please, the minutes of two meetings of the planning committee that were held earlier in the autumn. Um, first of all, uh, the minutes of the meeting on the 30th of September. I have just one, it's, it's really a typo. On page three, in the fourth paragraph, it says, um, uh, Mr. Taylor stated, uh, would be included in the representative, and the mayor's, now it's intend to publish policy. Um, rather than intending to publish. It's, as I say, it's just a typo. But other than that, I think those minutes um, look fine to me. Um, can we agree those, please, colleagues? Agreed. Agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. And secondly, we have the minutes of the meeting that we uh, held on the 28th of October. Um, this was relating to the application by the Natural History Museum. 
Um, are, are they approved? Is it? Uh, are we happy that I sign those? Great. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Very good. Well, in that case, um, we can uh, proceed very rapidly to the uh, principal item of business this evening, and that is the the application uh, in Kings Road, um, usually regarded as uh, discussed as Kings Walk Shopping Mall, and I think. Uh, Martin Lomas, I think you're going to present this to us. So Martin, when you're ready, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm just going to briefly come up on camera again, um, just to remind everybody that it's me speaking, but as I go through the presentation, I'm, I'll turn my camera off. Um, so thank you, Chairman. Um, so my presentation tonight um, will uh, form two, three parts. Firstly, I'll take you through a series of images um, to help re-familiarise yourselves with the site and surroundings. Secondly, I'll explain the details of the proposal um, so you can re-familiarise yourself with those. And lastly, I'll show you a series of drawings and images um, to allow you to understand better the relationship between the proposed development and run our house uh, to the rear of it. So this slide shows the application site outlined in red. Um, you can also see uh, the Ranella House residential buildings outlined in blue. Kings Road, you will see here to the southeast. This slide can we, shows. Can we all see that? Sorry, I, I, who just made that request? Is somebody not seeing the slides? Yes, yeah, Martin Flash, I can't see what you're presenting. Okay, so is Tom from Governance able to assist? Uh, yeah, you, sh you should be able to see the slides in the centre of the screen. Have you got your um, your Teams uh, window sort of on a full screen? Yes, I'm on full screen and all I can see is nine initials of the members of the meeting. In the bottom right hand corner, is there a sort of picture of a file, like a PowerPoint file? Yes. OK, now I've got if it. If you click on it, yeah. Yes, perfect. I've got it. Thank you. Is that good? Does that work? Yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Very good. OK, all right, That that's good. Um, Martin, uh, so, so carry on. Thanks. So, thank you, um, Chairman. This slide shows the surrounding heritage assets. So you will see the, the application site in the centre, which is not in a conservation area itself, but you can see to the north, east and west, it's bounded by the Chelsea Conservation Area in yellow and the Royal Hospital Conservation Area in pink. The Sloan Square Conservation Area can also be seen at the top of the image hatched brown. Um, the, the Deeper pink colours denote grade two listed buildings um, and the green colour up on the top right hand corner denotes the grade two star chapel to Duke of York's headquarters. Uh, this is an aerial image showing the application site, Kings Road, you can see here, um, and the Ranel House building on top of the uh, rear part of the site. This photograph shows you the current front elevation of the building. It's uh, it consists of the buildings in between the red lines there and Tryon Street. You can see just to the right of the application site. Some further images showing you the existing Kings Walk shopping mall um, and the two buildings that also form part of the application site which I will refer to as the ghost building and Muji building uh, based on their occupiers. And then in the bottom right, you can see the uh, Tryon Street entrance uh, to the existing site. This is a, um, a view showing, uh, looking down Tryon Street towards Kings Road. You can see the site on the right hand side here. And then moving on, this is the existing roof of the King's Walk Mall looking towards the King's Road from Ranella House. Um, you'll note the um, atrium roof, glazed roof here, which will be a feature of many photographs I show you. 
Um, and then this image, you can see on the right hand side, you can see the front parapet of the King's Walk shopping centre, the taller ghost building on the left hand side. Um, and for reference, you see this um, glazed roof is nestled in this position here on the left image. Um, so this photo is looking back towards Ranella House. Um, this is the glazed atrium I referred to before, which is a good point of reference. This is obviously on the roof of the first floor of the King's Walk <coughs> shopping mall. Ranel House in the background, ghost building on the right hand side. And then another view across the roof, again the glazed atrium for reference and Ranella House. And then a view looking back the other way um, and you would just also start to see the, um, the, the lowest properties on Ranella House that you couldn't see in the previous image and start to see the gap between the first floor of King's Walk and Ranella House. And then this image is um, looking out of the site. Um, you can see the properties on Bywater Street just appearing above the roof there. And this image um, is then down in the space between the first floor of the King's Walk shopping mall, um, the glazed atrium for reference again, um, and then Ranella House on the right hand side and the patios to the, um, the lowest floor flats visible to the right here. And then this is an image looking the other way. Um, from where we were just looking. Again, you can see the first floor of the, the King's Wall Mall on the right hand side and the atrium in the centre. So moving on to the proposal itself, in summary, it's for the demolition of the existing building and replacement with a five storey building, providing retail office and flex flexible town centre uses, including uh, gym and leisure uses. So this Drawing shows the existing front elevation. Um, obviously, the red denotes the outline of the existing building and what will be demolished. And this is the proposed front elevation. Um, I'll just um, flick back just so you can have a look at that. There, again, there we go. Um, and then in terms of um, Looking at it again, so this is a photo from Royal Avenue showing the King's Wall Mall here and the uh, Ghost Building and Muji Building, and then a visualization of the proposed building in that view. This is the um, Tryon Street elevation as existing and as proposed. And this is the rear elevation, um, as if looking from Ranella House. You can see the glazed atrium and the first floor we've seen in photographs here. And then as proposed, and you will start to see the stepped facade, um, which we will see in further images. Then this is a section uh, through the existing site. So you see uh, Kings Road on the right hand side here. So the, the ground floor, which comes through and underneath Ranella House, the first floor area, which we've seen in various photographs with the, the walls there and the um, glazed atrium roof. You'll note, you will note there are two basement levels as well. And then this is the um, proposed section for reference. Um, so this slide also has uh, colours on it, which denotes the uses that are proposed. So that the salmon colour, if you like, denotes retail, which you'll see at ground floor frontage on the King's Road and on the um, first basement level. Um, the blue denotes office. This space here, although denoted green the same as this, is actually um, um, noted as being a flexible town centre use, anything from office to which um, what used to be B1 use to D1 and D2 use as well. And then to the rear of the site here, this is the, uh, the kind of gym leisure facility as intended in the application. And now moving on to some visuals. So this is looking 
west <coughs> down the King's Road. See the application site is in this location here. And as proposed, there. And then this is as proposed looking east. This is the application building here. You can see the gap where Tryon Street is there. And then this is the view looking down Tryon Street. Um, you see the application site here as existing and as proposed. Um, and then this is a, a, a kind of sketchy sketch visual um, submitted with the application showing the view down Tryon Street. The purpose of showing you this is just to show you the um, office and ledger facility entrance, which will be off Tryon Street in this location. And then that is the entrance itself. You'll note the wall you were just looking could see in the other image there. Um, and then this is a, a 3D visualization that is here to help you understand the, 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 um, the volume and the massing of the building. This stepped form here, which we'll, um, we'll explore a little bit more in terms of its relationship to the to Ranola House. And then moving on um, specifically to that relationship. So I'm going to show you a series of photographs now from um, Ranola House provided by the case officer. Um, show you the existing outlook so you can see the glazed atrium roof you can see the first floor of the shopping mall i think one of the important things to note because i'll show you on um later slides is the the stepped um line of the existing first floor um so on the western end it is closer to around our house than it is on the eastern end and it actually steps in here this side of the atrium this is another view looking over the existing roof. So again, glazed atrium roof and the first floor building. You can see the parapet to the uh, shopping mall and the ghost building, slightly taller. Um, looking down at the space between the two buildings as, as it stands. And then a slightly angled view looking across. So this section provides you with um, information in, in terms of the distances between the proposed building as it steps away and uh, the existing Ranella house. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the first floor is eight meters away from the facade there. So in terms of um, what I just showed you with the existing step facade at the first floor, um, there is a variation. So present on the the um, the western end the facade is 7.6 meters away so there will be an increase in the distance however on the majority and the eastern side it's currently 11 meters away um, so it'll be closer at eight meters in that location and i understand the parapet height compared to what you saw is approximately 285 millimeters higher um, then you'll see the additional massing in this location um, is um, at second floor, 11 metres away, at third floor, 14 metres, and then the top floor, 17 metres. This red line um, denotes the glazed atrium. You probably see the shape and understand it. So you've seen that in photographs. So roughly um, the height of the, the second floor there. And then these are just some existing and proposed <clears throat> excuse me, visualizations of the, the showing the, well, you've seen these images as they stand, um, but in terms of as proposed, you have existing and proposed. And then the other way, existing and proposed. So to conclude the presentation, um, just in summary, the benefits include optimization of the underutilized site, repa replacement of a poor quality building and supports the town centre vision, an enhanced contribution of the site to the uh, adjacent conservation areas um, and streetscape improvements and contribution to local infrastructure. No identify conflict with the development plan and the officer recommendation is to approve subject to um, conditions and securing section 106 agreement. Thank you, Chairman. Hey, thank you very much indeed, Martin.
<clears throat> so um, what I think we should do now um, is that we should uh, hear, first of all, from objectors to the scheme. Now, I think the way this works is that uh, two of the local councillors have uh, registered to speak. And I think, uh, provided they're agreeable, I think they should go first. So it's Councillor um, Will and Councillor Kamali. And they, given our rules, they have up to two minutes to speak uh, between them when they're ready. And then following that, I'm going to invite, I think, uh, I think uh, Mr. Linton uh, Connell, uh, you and Mr. Burgess uh, speak and you can share up to five minutes between you. Um, and then after that, what will happen is that the applicant and supporters can speak. They obviously have exactly the same time. After everyone has spoken, members of the committee are able to ask people questions. So that's how the next part of the meeting will work. Um, so um, if I can ask my colleagues, uh, Emma Will and uh, Jam Kamali, if, if you're able to join us on the line. Good evening, Chair. I'm just gonna turn my camera on so you can see me and then I'm gonna turn it off again. As it has a ten I have a tendency okay. <laughs> of freezing when I leave the camera okay. on. So I do, but I just want to let you know I'm I'm I am here and hello. So I'm I, I'm actually gonna speak um, and I'll turn my camera off now. Thank you. Um, so uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name, sorry, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Emma Will, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself and Jem Kamali, as we are the ward councillors in Royal Hospital Ward. Um, I really want to stress that we are broadly supportive of this development. We absolutely welcome the investment in what is a very tired old site, and we particularly welcome it at such a difficult time uh, for retail in the King's Road. However, um, we we know that some of our residents have some have some concerns, and particularly those people in Randler House, who, as you can see from the pictures, are very are very affected by this development. Um, so, on their behalf, we we want to seek assurances from the applicant on three issues. Firstly, the Louvre. Um, so, we do understand that drawings are only indicative at this stage, and that further detailed plans will need to be submitted. Uh, but nonetheless, residents have asked us to really highlight the fact that they would like these loops to be vertical and on the outside to have the least impact on, on the residents in around the house. Secondly, I uh, just really wanted to flag there have been some really bad historic noise issues associated with the co box, which was a gym there, which isn't there anymore. Um, we, we think these have actually we, we, uh, we've, these have been addressed by the conditions, but we just wanted to, to highlight those on behalf of residents. And the third uh, issue is uh, um, the position of what I, I guess the, what I would describe as the rear eastern elevation, which is uh, currently 11 metres uh, from the house, uh, the residents around the house. Um, after discussion, we understand that the applicant has agreed that uh, he will leave this wall effectively where it is at 11 metres and not bring it forward to eight metres. And he will do this via section 73A. Um, but we would be very grateful if he could confirm his intention to do that tonight. Um, thank you. I'm going to stop there. Very good. Um, thank you very much. Um, that's helpful. Um, so if I can ask now, um, um, uh, Mr. Connell, I think are, are you going to you're going to speak on behalf of uh, Ranley residents as well? Yes. Yes, uh, I don't know whether you can see me again. I'll put my camera on initially, um, but perhaps turn it off uh, if, if it makes the signal. Well, I, can, I think the I think the important thing is that we can we can all hear you clearly. So that's that's good. So right. um, along with Mr. Burgess, um, you have up to five minutes. So please, when you uh, when you're ready, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. I speak on behalf of over 20 residents in Rana House and with 60 objections to the scheme, we seek a deferral for a number of reasons. On noise, I hear what Councillor Wills says, but we would also like assurance that sound will be taken from Ranla House, not Kings Road. Uh, on the question of privacy, we would like uh, assurances on the angle of the grills because clearly there is no privacy, privacy if that is not right. Uh, on sense of enclosure, 
uh, an undertaking by cross trees uh, to make the section 73 application would certainly uh, help with that point but we are very concerned about the enclosure issue on light and air even avis and young acknowledge the effects on ranelagh house will be severe the planning officer's report states that retained NSL levels are considered very good for such a dense environment, but with three flats uh, on the lowest floors at around 30 to 34%, this is well below the 50% guideline. Point two report that BSC and NSL have been reviewed separately by Avis and Young, not together, and this may explain this misinterpretation and distortion of that perception. Point two did a model suggesting a setback of just 5.8 metres on the top and 1.7 on the floor below would greatly improve daylight penetration, but unfortunately cross trees flatly refused to consider this. Ranelagh House was built with only background heating and no ceiling lights in living rooms, and Avis and Young admit the flats will suffer up to 60 to 70 per cent drop in light, necessitating electric light most of the day. With no ceiling cavities, any suspended ceilings to conceal lighting will further reduce light from the windows. We're not clear if any of this has been taken into account in the reports. The results, massive installation costs for Ranelagh House, greatly increased lighting and heating costs, health and safety issues preparing food in poor light. The 36% reduction on emissions offset by the increases at Ranelagh House do not seem to be taken into account. To conclude, deferral will allow meaningful dialogue on light and air and attention to these issues and conditions. Cross trees are asked to look at these seriously and the point to proposal. A margin to be lost is always included in the scheme, so there is a margin to get a fair planning balance. Imagine living in Ranelagh House with all of the above issues. Is the application really ready to approve? Five months is a short time with 66 objections. Thank you for that. Uh, should there be any questions, we have Andrew Cardinal from Point Two and Matthew Hayes here to answer any questions on uh, from our professional team. Thank you, councillors. Well, thank you very much indeed for that. Um, now, Mr. Burgess, I, I think you, I think you're joining us by phone. And you actually have got a couple of minutes, if you know, okay. if you wish. Uh, so please, you go ahead when you're ready as well. Right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. can you yes. hear? Thank you me. can. Right. Okay. Uh, I'll be very quick. I speak. Yeah. Um, before I start, let me just say I'm speaking on behalf of Cracker Kings Road Association of Chelsea Residents, and I'm also speaking on behalf of Bywater Street Residents Association. Now I'll start. Um, firstly, um, height. Um, the uh, effect on um, views from Royal Avenue, the effect of the canyon light well, over, uh, overbearing on the back of the houses in Bywater Street, <coughs> uh, particularly on the backs of uh, the east side and on the front of the west side. Uh, also on the um, canyon-like effect it will have on Tryon Street. Point two, uh, the glass shop fronts are very, very boring and monotonous, not particularly attractive, like you know, 50 million others, couldn't we have had better shop fronts? And um, we've got all sorts of policies. I'd say they're poor design. Three, uh, the loss of the two period buildings, Muji at 118 and Ghost at 120. Uh, Ghost is about 125 years old and nothing wrong with it. It sits very happily where it's also always sat. It is quite a deep site. Uh, the Muji is a 1920s building, the only one of its type anywhere that I know of uh, in Chelsea and probably southwest London. It's not a brilliant building, but its curved corner is very unusual. What, I, I know they're not, not in the conservation area because the old co conservation area policy statements of 40 odd years ago uh, just shrugged and ignored that. But I think today we could look them, look at them with much more um, heritage view, but the, uh, we, are, we are where we are, and the fact that they are not in the conservation area, but I do plead for them because they are original buildings. Four, loss of residential, of, of the four residential units is to, to be deplored, and normally uh, the council would go to great lengths to preserve residential units, but it seems to be uh, swept through. Uh, 
five roof terraces. I did see, but I can't seem to find it in the report, that there were going to be roof t- t- terraces on the upper level. Uh, thinking of the people in Ranala, um and the back of, uh, of Tryon Street and the back of Bywater Street, could there be some conditions on those um, terraces that they are not being used for parties in the evening or weekends? Because it would be very tempting for office uh, users to have barbecue parties out there, and uh, wouldn't it be lots of fun, but not for the nearby residents? Uh, six and final point, Crossrail 2. The, the front half of the site, uh, either King's Road end, is within the safeguarded corridor for the tunnel. There's no mention that I can see in the report of this. Although we are taken that the Crossrail 2 in Chelsea is not going to happen, the safeguarding is still there. It's within the uh, the safeguarded corridor. Those are my points. Okay, um, thank you very much indeed for that. Should uh, I now you... um, um, do, go mute? Yes, no, please do. Um, thank you very so much, now, Joe. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so if, if, you, if you can uh, please stay on the line, uh, because now I'm going to ask um, the applicant and supporters to speak, and then afterwards there'll probably be questions, almost certainly from colleagues. So. Um, now, if I can ask um, the applicant and their advisors, um, please. And I think Mr. Mason, I think you, are, are you going to be the principal speaker? That is correct. Um, and it, tell me, does Mr. Flash, Martin Flash, do you, do you wish to speak first? I, I don't know, how would you like to do this? I think um, if, 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 if I may, I'll speak first and then Martin can follow, if that's okay, Martin. That's fine by me. Uh, that, that's absolutely fine. OK, well, in that case, you, you, between you, um, you have up to seven minutes. So please go ahead when you're ready. Thank you. Super. Uh, Chair, committee, good evening. Um, my name is Matt Mason. I'm a partner at Crosstree, uh, the owners of King's Walk Shopping Centre um, and the applicant for the scheme. Uh, also present are other members of our team, including award winning architects, squires and partners, uh, just to answer any questions you may have. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the entire community for their helpful input into the development that you see before you tonight. Um, despite the pandemic, we have consulted throughout the year in two main phases, one pre-COVID in February and early March, and then latterly in June. Um, we held exhibitions physically at King's Walk and online, distributed a community newsletter, produced two films uh, showing local residents how our plans were developing. I've personally met many people via Zoom and Teams and when allowed to face to face, socially distanced, of course, uh, including community groups such as Martin Flash's Royal uh, Avenue Residents Association, um, Chelsea Society, Richard, um, uh, Cracker, Bywater Anderson and Tyron Street residents and of course Ranala uh, House residents and many others. Um, we also use the council's preferred online engagement tool, Built ID, uh, to engage in a more, more wide and diverse audience. Over 1,500 people responded in the first phase and 2,000 in the second. Um, that consultation showed a widely supported scheme from the community. 92% of respondents support the use of traditional local inspired architecture. 74% uh, supported the shared road surface on Tyron Street and most importantly when we asked people do they think these designs improve the King's Road 90% of respondents said yes. Now whilst I'm sure uh, you have walked past King's Walk uh, uh, in the past you may not have been in it for a while. Um, it was converted from a factory into a Sainsbury's and then lastly a Virgin Megastore um, and it's now an underused and forlorn shopping centre with a number of empty units even pre-Covid. Uh, it's poor quality architecture, and as the case officer has said, uh, it, it's um, ex specifically excluded from the surrounding conservation areas. Our scheme aims to put this right. It will contain high quality retail um, on the ground floor, offices and flexible spaces to the rear, which could house a health club or a medispa. Um, and this mix will enliven the King's Road, increase football, contrib footfall rather, uh, contribute jobs to the whole community. At a time when investment in our high streets is essential to their very survival, including the King's Road, this scheme is vital to achieving this. Our closest neighbours at Ranala uh, have been consulted um, since an initial meeting in December 2019. In fact, we've met individually and as a group over 18 times um, with these residents. And whilst many have raised objections, I believe we have worked well uh, and closely with them to address their concerns where we can. And we will continue to work closely with them uh, throughout the development into the future. 
We are the freeholder of their apartments. And as such, we have a clear common interest in ensuring our development enhances their outlook and value. Um, to pick up on a point, I think that uh, Councillor uh, Will uh, has made with regards to the rear elevation wall, um, you know, subject to permission being granted tonight and following that approval, we will, of course, uh, happy to agree to, to make that change subject to the normal consultation process, etc. Um, with regards to matters raised by, uh, by Linton, um, our daylight consultants have undertaken extensive modelling uh, and I can confirm that our scheme is fully compliant with the BRE guidelines for the vast majority of neighbouring windows and rooms. And inevitably, there will be some effect, but these have been minimised and achieved lighting levels equivalent to many urban developments in London and indeed across um, the borough. We've increased the cutback and lowered the building heights during consultation with residents and the side elevations. And at the fourth floor, the distance, as you've seen from the presentation, uh, to the rear of Ranley uh, to our facade is 17 metres. That's equivalent to the width of the King's Road. These measures, along with the privacy louvers, which we're more than happy, as we have said before, to residents to, to go through the detail with them when, uh, when we're actually on site so that we can, we can show them exactly where they should be going and they can agree that with us, will improve the residents' outlook. Uh, and the green vertical wall also helps do this. We've held consultations with noise disturbance or noise disturbance, another issue raised by Linton with residents and Keith Mahaffey, RBKC Senior Environmental Health Officer, to ensure there is no repeat of the cobox sound issue from the previous owner. Uh, our specialist consultants who are on, uh, on, on the meeting tonight um, have, have put together construction methods that we need to put into place to protect Ranla, uh, and we're happy and we're committed to these measures as per the committee report and the conditions. Architecturally, these proposals will create a building of real merit. The facade design has been informed by the Royal Hospital with large windows below circular arches. Arches. It's been commended for creating a visual bookend to the Royal Avenue by RBKC's design review panel. Tyron Street will benefit from that new shared road surface, prioritising pedestrians and cyclists and an improved setback to the rear space. The proposals also bring forward significant economic benefit. Uh, you know, giving full, 430 full-time jobs once complete, and that doesn't include the construction jobs that will be created during the development. New office space will bring additional footfall to the area, which has been recognised by local businesses uh, uh, and significant landowners who have written in support of the scheme. As well as the economic benefits, it will assist the council on a net carbon target for 2040. We retain 68% of the existing structure of the site and provide a carbon saving of over 36%. And we are also targeting Bream Excellence certification. And whilst the, uh, all of those things, the unique vertical garden wall to the rear elevation of the building will also include, uh, increase biodiversity, improve air quality and create a much needed better outlook for residents. Chair, in summary, we believe our consultation shows the proposals have significant local support for a building of real architectural merit that will contribute to the local economy and benefit all those living, working and visiting the King's Road. And finally, in an environment where just this week we saw another two retail stalwarts went bust and more 25,000 jobs lost, high streets around the UK are in need of new vision and investment. The King's Road is not immune from this and an approval tonight will see us invest over £50 million at Kingswalk with immediate effect, pushing on with detailed design and procurement for a 2021 start, getting the King's Road ready for a post-COVID world that awaits us all. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, so, Mr Flash, uh, I think you represent the uh, Royal Avenue Residents Association. Um, you, you, there's enough time left for, for, for you just to... Uh, talk for a, for a short while, because um, I understand that you're actually a supporter of the proposal. So please, when you're ready, go ahead. Uh, good evening, everybody. I represent about 80 households in Royal Avenue, and we uh, keep in contact with the members of the Re uh, Royal Avenue Residents Association with a email system. And we've circulated all the details of this scheme for their comments uh, as and when they've been given to us. Uh, without exception, everybody uh, that has uh, returned comments to me has been favourable to the scheme for what is a fairly obvious reason, which is there's an immense improvement to the facade and the outlook from Royal Avenue. Of course, we expect uh, increased footfall, but we think that the scheme as proposed will be uh, a great contribution to the area. If I could just finish with a personal comment, I've lived in Royal Avenue since uh, 1970 and King's Walk has never been a real success and Tryon Street has always been pokey. Uh, I think the scheme will be an immense improvement. 
And so that is why both on a personal level and as representing the, uh, the House Thoughts in Royal Avenue, we support it. Thank you okay. very much. Um, very, very good. Well, thank you very much indeed for that, uh, that comment. Um, OK, um, so we will now have uh, questions from members of the committee to either objectors or the applicant and supporters. Um, can I remind everyone, please, make yeah. it clear who it is that you're asking a question of? Because obviously we, we have a lot of people. Uh, we've got a lot of people on the call this evening. Um, who would like to go first? I think uh, um, Emma Dent Code, um, would you like to go first? Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, and um, I have my, my questions are for Mr. Mason. Um, just to say, um, I know every square inch of Kings Road, I was born there, and I certainly, um, I was certainly there before the current buildings were there. And I don't think anybody would disagree that that it needs it needs to be improved. Um, I, I have a, I got a lot of problems about the design actually, and and the you know quality review panel wasn't really positive about that, but. Um, my specific and I'm also very concerned about loss of residential maybe that's something for the um for the planners but I've got three specific questions for you one of them is um the rather large amount of space which is going to mix town use and I don't really I think that was the expression I don't really know what that means if those are going to be restaurants which is um which is likely um I think the resident the uh, local the particularly the residents of uh, Ranlet House should know that because that will that will completely change the whole DNA of the area of people coming and going. We have endless problems of coexistence. So that's one. What is mixed tanks and what can it be used for? Um, the second one is there was something else. I mean, there's a lot of there's a very little detail here. There are no sections and floor plans. I find it very difficult to get my head around it. And I can read architecture plans. And um, the other one is something about stopping up of a highway, which I don't understand. Something about that corner going into Tryon Street. Um, and the third one is the accessible roof terrace, which which we've heard nothing about, and we really need to know. I think one of the residents said that they were concerned about about use of roof, roof, roof terrace. So that's, there's three things: the mixed town use. Does it mean restaurants, stopping up of highway, um, and accessible roof terrace? And I've got lots of other issues, but those are for you, Mr. Mason, please. Okay, so taking them in that order. The mixed town use, I think um, that um, the officer uh, was talking about was the first floor. Um, and we we see that as a as a, an A1, A3 use on that floor, predominantly uh, retail, to be to be honest. Um, but it could also be office as well. So we haven't seen that as a restaurant space in any shape or form, but we haven't been that specific about it. But we're not. Um, uh, it's, it's meant to work with the ground floor retail effectively. And it can also work with the rear of the site and the ability to potentially do something with um, uh, the, the leisure use that is in that rear site. Does that make sense? I don't, you have to ask the officer about what, what, what I don't, the various I don't, uses are. I don't understand what you mean working with the leisure site. I don't know what you mean. So, I so, so that you can access the uh, the leisure area from the rear where I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a plan that, that can be put up by the officer to show you, but it means that effectively you can link those two together so that so that you can get effectively some daylight into an area that could be used as, as we've said before for like a health club or a medi spa. Okay, that, that's also ringing, ringing alarm bells for me. Okay, thank you very much. So could you explain the stopping up of the highway and the, the accessible roof terrace, please? The, the, the stopping up of the highway is on the corner of the Muji unit. There is a small triangle that effectively uh, where the entrance of uh, of the Muji unit is that that will need to be stopped up because over the course of time uh, it effectively becomes highway because it's uh, it's inside of our our red line if you like but because it's uh, accessible from the highway to cut across um, it, it means that it has to be stopped up formally. Okay, and then the um, accessible roof terrace, and I'd yeah. also like to know. Sorry, if. Um, the uh, the comments in the quality uh, review panel have been taken on board at all because I don't see that. Perhaps you can explain. Thank you. So the the accessible roof terrace. There is only one accessible roof terrace, and that is the fourth floor, um, fronting onto the King's Road. All of the other terraces that that effectively are formed by us staggering the building back are non-accessible. 
and we've been very clear about that. And I think there's a condition within the draft conditions that say that they are non-accessible. Um, with regards to the design review panel, if I may, yeah. Yeah. sorry, quality review panel, if I may, um, you might it might be better for me to ask Robert Bouchel from Squires and Partners to talk through the issues that were raised there and how we've how we've reflected and related back to it as the architect for the scheme. Is that okay? Okay. Robert, are you um, able to? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm able to join and hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, yeah, no, we we had a very very good meeting with the quality review panel. I felt, and they uh, brought up a number of comments. Um, and in our in our design and access statement, we detail how we've incorporated those comments into our design. Now, there's quite a number of things that they raised that we've amended our design, and the design you see before you tonight incorporates those comments. I'm not sure if the councillor won't if you want me to go through in detail as to how we amended the design, but it's it's fully set out in our design and access statement, and. Uh, uh, you know, we amended the design in a number of ways to take on board those quite helpful comments. Okay, thank you. I didn't see that, but thank you. Thanks, Chair. I'm done for now. Okay, um, th thanks, Emma. Um, I think um, Councillor Idris, uh, one, well, I think you're next, and then Charles. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my first question is actually, uh, I have a couple of questions. My first question is um, uh, to um, to the applicant, and uh, I just wanted to um, confirm that he uh, they they are actually aiming towards a a carbon uh, to, to to meet the carbon emissions of the of the council uh, in 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 the new building. The, the, that's one question. The second question is um, the leisure area uh, on the back. Um, is it going to be specific for spa use or could it be used as a gym? And if it is used as a gym, are they going to uh, do some soundproofing? Because when we had a gym before, um, the kickboxing gym, um, uh, the sound was really one of the biggest problems residents complained about. And I was wondering if the area is going to be um, soundproofed so, so that if it's used as a gym, it will not disrupt uh, the surrounding area. Uh, my, my third question is about pollinators. Uh, one of my passions and uh, I know you have a green wall and uh, but I was just wondering whether you did say something about biodiversity I just wanted to confirm like the carbon emissions that uh, we, you will have um, uh, you will have uh, allow for biodiversity and for pollinators to actually be uh, planted uh, my final question is um, I just wanted to know the proximity um, uh, in one in between um, the current proximity be between the building and uh, I know we're talking about the 17 meters, which is at the top, but at the bottom, what is it now? And I know it's going to be eight meters. Yes, thank you so much. Um, the, 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 yes, here, the, 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 that, the picture before that, sorry, the four, yeah. Um, what was it? What what is it now? What's the what's the distance now? It's I know it's is it how much less than eight meters? That's what I'm trying to ascertain. And I, I, yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Sorry, shall I answer that one first? And Robert, yes. you can correct you can Robert Bouchel can correct me if I got this one, but I believe it's seven point three meters, Robert. So it's seven point three now, and and it's going to be eight. Eight in that location where that where that section line is across there in okay all right yeah okay thank you shall i um answer yes. the other one the carbon the carbon emissions i believe we're policy compliant um with rbkc uh, policies and as i said in uh in, in the speech you know our um uh, our embedded carbon if you like is is 36 percent less than what it would be if it was a new building because we're keeping so much of it mm -hmm. um in terms of the leisure area and i will ask our acoustician to come in here as well because he can talk you through some more of that detail mm -hmm. but but just before i do that we've had extensive conversations with um uh, the environmental health officer keith mccaffey and also residents of ranla and we understand the issues that were held that were had by the previous owner mm -hmm. on cobox 
um, and we will not be repeating that. But if I ask Graham, if you could just just talk in a very high level about the sort of things that we would need to do to enable that to happen. Certainly, thanks for uh, letting me speak. Um, so yes, we've we've certainly understood what the issue <coughs> were with the co box facility, and we've even gone down and had a look and seen what's been installed to sort of give an overview as to what the current situation is and what might have gone wrong with the previous design. Um, what we've proposed is a staged approach to ensure that we don't have the same issues this time round. Um, so our basic concept, keeping it fairly high level, is we will build a floating structure. Uh, they call it a box within a box. So we will put rubber bearings or springs on the floor. We will mount a new slab on the top of that. And then we will build all the internal walls and a suspended ceiling off that floating floor mm -hmm. and suspended via springs from the uh, ceiling above. We will clad all the columns, any structural elements. So there's no direct path from the new gym facility directly into the structure that's shared with the buildings above. So mm -hmm. it, it, th there's a there's a process for us to go through to detail that and design that and there's testing for us to go but the key thing is that we've got a condition that we've agreed with the environmental health officer as discussed and we're happy with that condition and that gives the residents the comfort that whatever we do will be designed to make sure that there's the noise transfer is as per the uh, council's requirements okay thank you does, does that deal with it Yes, yes, thank you very much. And the biodiversity, yes. The, the, yeah, the, bio, the biodiversity. Um, again, I will ask um, uh, Phil Allen, who is our sort of expert on this stuff and, and has designed the green wall um, to speak on this. Uh, and there is a condition or, uh, within, the, um, within the draft conditions as well about this. But Phil, can you just give an overview of that? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, so the planting has been designed specifically around pollinating <laughs> Uh, species. Um, we have a scheme that uh, approximately has 100 different plant species um, and broadly across the vertical gardens all of the facade will have around 46, 47,000 different plants so it will have a huge amount of biodiversity. We're very proud of the planting that we can achieve here. Fantastic. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, thanks Wallo. Um, I think Charles O'Connor, um, Councillor O'Connor. Thank you very much. And um, thank you very much to the applicants and architects. Uh, it's been interesting to hear what you've been saying. I agree that the scheme is much better than um, what is there at the moment, but I do have some concerns about it. Um, one does relate to the green wall. And I noticed in the quality review panel that they also raised some concerns about the green wall. I appreciate that they're all the rage at the moment, but the QRP quality review panel said that they were concerned about the sustainability of the wall and some of the species proposed and the um, ability to water it and things like that. And they also suggested that a better solution might be to provide some garden space uh, for the um, residents of Ranala House. And since you are the freeholder of Ranala House as well, I imagine that would not be impossible. So I just wanted to hear your reaction to that, first of all. Um, the second point uh, is I wanted to explore these louvers, which are discussed um, uh, over the windows, I think, at the back. and. Um, if you could tell me a bit more about those, please. And then the third point was uh, the QRP, the quality review panel also raised some concerns about the uh, massing resulting from the gym, um, if I've understood that correctly, and that remains part of the scheme. And um, so I, I wanted to hear your, your views on that, please. So it's the, uh, the green wall, um, the louvers and the massing. Thank you. If I let, um, shall I let Phil Allen talk about the the species and and making sure that you know this thing doesn't die and how it's um, uh, irrigated, etc. Phil, do you want to speak to that briefly, and then I'll pick up the point on the gardens. Yes, by all means. Thank you. Um, so the uh, certainly some of the earlier um, pioneering living walls in the UK in the 80s and 90s uh, were a bit of a mixed result. I think over the last 30 years. 
things have developed a great deal. The, the system here, and um, why I feel very confident about it, is that it's now fully linked with the fabric of the building. So there is a blue roof system which effectively collects water on the roof, and every droplet of rain that lands on the roof is fed through a system that then is directed via the, the facade planting. So it, it's, it's contained within that natural system, and there's two tanks that effectively will store that water. One is a backup tank, should there ever be a shortfall in water, mm. i.e. rainwater, but the majority of it will be fed by the, the, uh, the, the natural rain occurring on the building. So I think water and long-term sustainability of it, um, I feel, is, is, is the, the, the gold standard in living wall design. Uh, and then secondly, perhaps your point on sustainability. I think the, the in, uh, inclusion of vertical planting in our uh, cities is only going to become stronger in the future. We have much more uh, densification occurring and, and the greater importance of introducing nature back to cities. So the facade planting aspect allows us to, on this scheme, plant uh, quite a significant number of flowering uh, species uh, for wildlife and for habitat that we wouldn't be able to achieve um, realistically in any other way. So I, I think sustainability wise, it's a, it's a really important aspect of our future development work. Does that uh, go some way to address any concerns? That, that, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. I would like to hear about the, um, the alternative of a garden um, available to the users around the house as well. But I expect that's a question for Mr. Mason. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we've um... We've spoken about that with with the residents of Ranla, both here, here <coughs> pardon me, both here uh, and indeed to the space between the south block and the north block. And the opinion was um, from those residents that they didn't want those garden spaces because of privacy. So because they have balconies and windows that look out onto the spaces, they uh, they would rather have their privacy and not have that as a common area garden for um, for all of the um, apartments that are there. So um, it's 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 possible to do, but it, it wasn't wanted when we offered it um, uh, to the residents. Uh, it, again, in the spirit of, of openness, and we carry on talking to, to residents on this thing, on these things, we have also offered uh, you know, extended terraces to the first floor uh, areas of um, uh, of those apartments that face onto on the south block that face onto here, because there is an area there which would make a lot of sense for them to to be able to 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 use as a garden area. Um, and and again, that that dialogue is ongoing on that one. Thank you very much. And then on on the louvers. Again, this is um, picked up during consultation in terms of privacy issues between the rear elevation and um, and obviously the windows um, of, of of the south block of Ranla. And the solution we came up with were the um, were privacy louvers, effectively that will be angled so that when you're standing uh, in the office space or in the the first any of the floors there, that you cannot then see directly into um, uh, somebody's uh, somebody's window. Um, now we we can draw those, and in fact we have drawn them in to an extent, but they need a very detailed design, which I think the only way to properly do it will be to look at it on site um, and angle those louvers as they need to be to ensure that it actually works. And again, we've offered to the residents that when we get to that stage, that we'll sort of you know we'll do that with them. There's also a condition. Um, that means that we cannot occupy any of that space until we have provided those details um, uh, to your officers so that they've approved them as well. What are they proposed to be made of, please? Um, I mean, probably metal, to be honest with you, but they could be they could be timber. They could be, um, you know, they're unlikely to be a, uh, unlikely to be stone. I think that probably the, the most likely will be metal or timber. But again, we would have that conversation with both your officers <coughs> and with the residents. Yeah, thank you. And then very quickly on, on the on the massing of the gym. Yeah, I, 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 Robert, do you know what that is? That about the entrance on Tyron Street? Um, it, well, we d we discussed we we did discuss the massing of the north elevation, which is the the elevation on the screen just now with the quality review panel, and subsequent to that meeting, we um, we moved the, our elevation further away from Ranley House to take on board comments made at the quality review panel. Can I just check, where is the gym? It's still in the scheme, isn't it? Yeah, there's there's a leisure use that is on the lower floors of the building. So that is accessed from Tryon Street. Yeah. And that would be at ground and lower ground floor and, 
and possibly part first floor above the retail space. So yeah, the area in green in the image on the screen right now. I mean, what? Yeah, what I would say about that is that is that we it's a leisure it's a leisure use, and uh, you know, particularly in this moment in time, it's um, we don't know whether that will be a gym or a medi spa, or indeed whether or not we would like it to be an office, even you know, mm. because we need that flexibility. Um, uh, as we are in a, you know, uh, in a world that's changing rapidly at the moment. I mean, there's not a single, I don't, I don't know if gyms are reopened now in, in uh, uh, tier two or not. I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you, but, you know, we're, things are changing quite rapidly. So it's not necessarily definitely going to be a gym. It's a leisure use in terms of planning use. Thank you very much. It's all from me. OK, um, thank you, Charles. Actually, I might come back in a few minutes. Um, following up some of the comments that Councillor O'Connor has made there. But I think, first of all, I think uh, Councillor Bennett, I think, Tom, you've been waiting. Um, have you got a couple of questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, Tom. thank you very much, Chair. Can you hear me OK? Yes, of course. Yeah, Yeah. great. Uh, yeah, three, three questions, if I may. Um, uh, the first one is on light. So I just want to, to I read the, um, uh, the sort of the studies, the BEV studies in the papers, but just sort of in layman's terms, I want to get a bit of a feeling for the impact on, on sort of daylight and sunlight in those uh, ground floor and basement flats, both com the, what's currently there compared to what's in the plans and then also what what difference will the new proposal make, uh, which was discussed briefly of moving it, um, moving the building back 11 metres instead of instead of eight metres. So I'll, if you answer that one first, then I'll ask my next question um, once you've answered. OK, I'll, I'll ask um, Ian Absalon, who uh, I'm sorry, by the way, I'm presuming that was for us. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll ask you in Absalon just to to um, to give you in layman's terms what, what, it, what it all means. Um, Ian, are you there? Yeah, all online. All hear me? Yep. Yep, good. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, yes, obviously, we've reported that there, there is an impact loss of light to, to some units um, and the vast majority around the site do not lose anything that's uh, noticeable at all. Uh, having tested uh, some 185 rooms, um, it really comes down, to be honest, to a few rooms in Ranala that see the biggest difference. Um, and we've reported that the reductions in daylight to the windows are more than 20%, which is a guideline. But um, just like any other scheme within a dense area being tested nowadays, and certainly within the borough, we've tried to make sure that we've left enough light that is sufficient for good use. And we think we've done that. Um, it's not particularly easy to cut the scheme back any further to make any more uh, availability of light because you lose the, the elevation to the front, front facade on Kings Road, um, which I think is a, is a big factor. The in terms of shall I shall I just address the the, the change that was requested by um, um, Councillor Will in terms of yes, moving please. that wall back from um, eight to eleven metres that actually doesn't make any difference from a daylighting sunlighting um, point of view at all. Um, it's it's uh, as 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 we understand it, it's more about sense of enclosure in that particular okay. location. Okay. Uh, thank thank you very much. Before I move on to my next question, I just. Be great to hear from the um, resident, sorry, the gentleman, I, I forget your name, from Ranala House, um, uh, who spoke uh, to get your views on, on the impact. Mr. Connell. Yes. Linton Connell, yes. Linton Connell. Yes, I, yes. I yeah, your, your views on the impact of that change uh, to 11 metres and the impact on both sense of enclosure and, and sunlight. Yes, thank you for that opportunity. Um, yes, certainly setting it back to the existing building line does help, but uh, it certainly uh, doesn't obviate the need to get more light into these flats. Um, I noticed that we were just told that it was that to get more light in would necessitate removing the whole of the top floor and affecting the Kings Road elevation. And with respect, I don't think that is the case, and it's certainly not what our light consultant is telling us. He's asking for only five point something metres set back on the top, which doesn't affect the front at all. 
but would act, would improve the light flow into the backs of these rooms at Ranelagh House. The rooms in the living rooms are some of them nearly seven metres deep. So, of course, where the light can only shine in at a very steep angle from above, it will shine on very, very little of it. And the back parts of these rooms will be extremely dark. And of course, when coupled with the fact that there's no decent overhead lighting in them, it, that's made even worse. Um, yeah. So I, I would like a further explanation on why it would be necessary to take off the whole of the top floor, yeah. which we, we aren't asking for that. Mm. Well, OK, well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Connell. Um, Miss Mason, I think it would be helpful if that's OK, if you could um, uh, want you or, or one of your team could come back on that. Uh, the impact of, of just removing five metres back on the top floor versus removing the whole thing. Yeah, and again, Ian, if if um, you can yep. address that, well, what are you, yeah, Ian, you can address that, and then I'll pitch in afterwards. Sure, we we did look at that. Obviously, we've tried to look at the whole and modelling for this all the way through, and we did receive the the comment about removing some of the back to improve the lighting into those rooms um, in terms of the penetration of daylight. Um, the section we were shown uh, from from the residents. Um, we drew that up in a 3D way. Obviously, light works in 3D, not in just straight section. And that drawing, the five meter move drawing, doesn't uh, achieve what was aimed for by the residents. To do that, you'd have to take off a lot more. And as I said earlier, that does prove to reduce the top floor to virtually nothing. So, so your view is that reducing it by five metres makes little to no difference in terms of, of daylight? Yeah, I mean, clearly it would, it would change it a little bit, but it doesn't It doesn't uh, change it significantly. OK. And, and but is, is that, do we have any sort of figures on that? Was that part of the study that was um, carried out? We, we, that's not in the report because it wasn't done for the planning application. It was done in response to some some discussions with the residents. So you won't have seen those figures, I don't think. Okay, because it, it just seems to be a, a little bit. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm no expert, so so it's hard to judge on this. But there seems to be sort of two opinions on the uh, impact of of moving of just reducing that that top floor slightly. Um, one side saying it, it would make a significant difference and one side saying it wouldn't. So I'm not sure how, how we resolve that, but I, that's, that's helpful. I'm not sure we're going to get <clears throat> any um, further on that right now. So I'll move on to my next question, uh, which is a much simpler one. Uh, the number I know the number of parking spaces are decreasing, but there will still be parking spaces. Um, have you? Do you intend to install some electric car charging units? We're obviously trying to encourage the uptake of electric cars and uh, reduce um, um, or improve the level of air quality in the borough. Do you have any plans for that? And Mr. Mason, sorry, or, or anyone on on your side? Um, is Neil uh, Neil? Are you on this? I think you are. Oh, our transport advisor. Yes. I mean, effectively, we've taken the numbers down to the to those residents that have still got parking spaces. So, if there is a demand for it, we'll, we'll certainly um, uh, look at doing it. But Neil, do you want to answer that in terms of policy wise? Yeah. So, just to um, out outline the, uh, the, the the changes in the parking numbers, there are currently sixty five parking spaces within the basement. Um, Twelve are subject to an, uh, an existing allocation for the residents of Runley House. Uh, those 12 spaces uh, will be retained uh, going forwards. Um, the rest of the spaces are currently uh, subject to short-term leases and licences, um, primarily, primarily to uh, commercial occupiers. Those um, uh, leases and licences would be uh, terminated. Um, in terms of the uh, electric vehicle charging points, I, I think because of the 12 bays to be retained are um, in effect outside of the the application scope because they relate to the existing uh, residential units. Uh, we, we haven't to date proposed electric vehicle charging points, but of course uh, there's nothing to, um, to, to prevent those um, uh, spaces being uh, electric, uh, you know, installed with, with, with charging points going forward. Okay, I mean, I suppose if they're outside outside of the red line, then they might be outside of the scope of this application. But 
um, it would be it would perhaps be a good opportunity to get some installed. So maybe I'll check back in on that with with officers. Um, the final one, um, just again looking at the uh, quality review panel document, um, reference was made to uh, the windows, the shop front windows going uh, through onto onto the side street, and how that might. Um, cause sort of clogging on that on that narrow street a lot of pedestrians standing there is that something you've looked at um something that you're concerned or not concerned about um so again i think i'll refer to robert here um yeah thanks matt um no we had these comments made by the qrp and subsequent to that we amended our design so at the qrp uh, panel we presented a scheme that had two quite large window bays of retail onto that side street um, and subsequent to that we, uh, we've amended that and we've reduced the amount of retail glazing to um, to Tryon Street. Okay so if, just very quickly if we look at slide 31 if that would be possible for whoever's in, in control. Thanks very much. So that's so where that's now a brick wall in um, in the sort of middle on the side street that used to be shop front glazing, did it? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and then the one after that is not sh is no longer retail. It's that, it's that, something else. Yeah, that is the entrance to the to the office space. Okay. Um, and also as part of that commentary, we reduced we looked at the um, the fenestration to the shop mm -hmm. windows, and we basically reduced the size of the glazing and put those horizontal bars broken up that mm -hmm. window fenestration as well that was part of the same commentary i think okay okay well, well that's that's very helpful thank you for that um no no more from me chair for now <clears throat> thanks thanks tom um okay i've, I've just got a, a couple of quick questions at the end here actually um i'm really wanting to follow up a couple of points that uh, uh linton connell made actually the first is, is, is about the issue of noise. And this, this is really, I think, a question for the applicant and, and, and his team. Um, I mean, it's obvious that this, this kind of boxing club place did create quite a lot of disturbance. Can I be absolutely certain that the proposal includes soundproofing? I think there is a condition somewhere in the report. I'm just trying to see where it is. I think it's condition 15. I just wanted to be, be absolutely clear um, that this is something which you are happy, you know, you are happy with and, and it's something that really is going to be given to uh, given effect because in, in a building which essentially is a concrete uh, concrete structure, you know, the, the the sound noise is going to travel up a building like that quite clearly. Um, can I just get clarification about that, please? Yeah, we're we're absolutely committed to making sure residents do not have a noise problem from what's happening in that basement. Um, absolutely unequivocal. OK, now that's helpful. Um, the second point, and, and maybe if we can, uh, Mr Lomas, if we can go back to, I think it might be slide 33, which is the sort of rear of the building, proposed rear of the building. Now, I have to say, I have to say, I have never seen a CGI image that didn't look beautiful. OK, <laughs> I've never seen one. Um, and, but I did want, because uh, I think this is a, a perfectly proper point, actually, by residents, to make sure that in terms of the maintenance, and I think this is condition four, I think, I just wanted to, again, to be absolutely certain that the way that the leases, the service charges, all of these kind of things for the development if it was approved and built out, that the money is available for, for this all to be maintained properly because what we're seeing on the screen, you know, that that's you know, that's a very pleasant outlook in many ways, particularly in in you know in, in a central London location. But if all imagine all of those plants being 
kind of a bit sad and a lot of them dead, that would obviously look that would look dreadful. Can can you give any clarification on that or, or assistance about that? Uh, yes, and and Phil can also um, chip in more technically as well. But we're looking at this system uh, in uh, in another development at the moment as well as this, um, and I'm I'm pleased to say that that actually it is. Whilst not, rel- whilst not maintenance free, it is relatively cost effective to maintain. You do not need to access it um, uh, uh, that often. The plants grow because there is a, a hydroponic system effectively and it, it's um, they, you know, permanently watered. Um, and it's about the selection of those plants in the first place and allowing them to grow. I understand that this CGI uh, makes it look jungle-like almost, and, and it certainly won't look like that <laughs> necessarily on day one. I get that. But, we, um, but we'll be doing everything we can to make sure it grows to a level and keeps at that level. And it will be, as you've said, there a condition within, um, uh, within uh, uh, the, the planning and the life of the development, and it will go onto the service charge for the office space, not for anywhere else. Um, so uh, again, we've done quite a lot of work into this because we're, as I say, we're using it somewhere else as well, and we're we're really happy that it's a there's a cost-effective manner of of treating that area. Okay, so the, the, I think the key point is you are satisfied that the, the the service and management charges that people occupying office space, uh, retail space in the building, that they are that's capable of generating sufficient revenue that it means that the, the this can be this rear of the building can actually be maintained in a proper way yes yeah, yeah correct I, I am absolutely confident of that okay all right thank you um and i suppose the um very final point i'd like to just ask um really is about the um the, the the privacy screens grills louvers um can, can you just sorry just i I'm, I'm just struggling to get my head around exactly where it is we're talking about so so where precisely on the building are we talking about these things and how, how's this going to work so the privacy screens are there you go so the privacy screens are in front of the windows on that rear elevation so that when you're standing or sitting in that office you cannot look right. through into the kitchens the living rooms or the bedrooms of any of the Randler residents um, and that's why i say each each window will need to have a slightly different louver angle i would imagine for um mm-hmm. to make sure that the where the window is that you can uh, overlook isn't seen hence why we need to do it in a detailed design fashion and probably as i said before you know when it's actually being built on site so you can stand there and you can work it out and the residents can see for themselves what you can see out of it okay all right thank you very much indeed well um thank you very much um colleagues i think are there any final final questions anyone would like to put to either objectors or the applicant no. OK, in that case, well, thank you very much, everyone who's registered to speak. Um, we now move on to a slightly you know, different part of the meeting, which is where members of the committee uh, are able to ask officers uh, questions. Um, so um, now who would like to go first in this section of the meeting? And I see Councillor Dent Code first. Amber. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks. Um, yeah, I've got so many questions I could go on all night, but there, there are there are a few things which I'm very concerned about. One of them, um, I'd say, no, nobody w- would deny that uh, this this stretch of uh, shops needs to be better, and I do think it's a shame that we're, we're losing some original buildings. Um, but you know, we're, we're going for kind of pastiche McDonald's Wren, I think, rather than that, that it's nothing to do with Mr. Wren at all. I'm finding that very difficult, actually. It's kind of Disneyfication, and I, I personally, I, I can't abide it, but there you go. Um, that's one issue. But um, more importantly is the loss of residential. And if this was happening in North Kensington, we would be hung out to dry um, losing four homes, whoever, whoever lived in them. Um, we are fighting over every square inch of land to provide homes for all our residents. Um, I 
genuinely don't understand why that's acceptable. So there's that one. Um, and then, um, yeah, I've got a huge problem with this um, lovely net carbon development, um, which seems to be um, totally um, mitigating um, the the, um, the design and, and purpose of uh, around the house, which which was um, it seems to be built, you know, designed around um, light, sunlight, and so on, and having needing very little light or heating um so you know it's going to um disbenefit Ranley house while it's creating a net carbon um um building there supposedly so i think you know given given that they're landlords of the whole site i think we need to look at that and it's really not net carbon if you're knocking buildings down so that's an, another issue entirely i've got massive problems with the mass and height um, but more than anything, I think we are very, very short of detail here. I don't see any sections. I don't see any floor plans. Um, and say that they're going to change the the profile at the back, but we haven't seen that. Um, I I think at this stage, if we're actually going to uh, looking at possibly approving this, I don't see enough detail. I want to see far more detail. This is Squires. This is Kings Road. It has to be much better than that. So whether or not I personally like it aside from all the other problems. I don't think we have enough detail. That also came up in the um, the uh, quality review panel. Um, I'm very surprised that we just have some visuals and a, and a few um, kind of gr graphic representations. So I, I've, I've got problems with all of that. So that's, um, in short, design issues. Um, it's not net carbon. Um, and um, yeah, the, it's just generally the, the lack of detail of this of this whole presentation. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, so I think I think probably uh, Mr. Nomas, would you like to address those questions? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so um, I'll start with the loss of homes. Um, I mean that's dealt with in paragraph six point eight and six point nine of the report, um, and of course we are um, we are facing uh, a housing shortage, and we are trying to provide as much homes to meet our housing needs. However, that we have existing policies that allow for the loss of homes in higher order town centres. So actually the loss of homes is policy compliant in this particular circumstance because it's in a, a major town centre, um, in the Kings Road major town centre. So those loss of homes comply with policy CH1. Um, so there isn't a conflict with policy here and that's why as officers we, we said that that's acceptable in this instance. Um, on the, the kind of, I guess the the, the style uh, style style of the building, your comments around the design. I mean, that's a, that's a judgment you will have to make of your own accord whether whether that's um, sufficient to uh, reject the scheme. I mean, officers' view is that it's a, a vast improvement. Actually, it's a it's a high quality um, building um, in the view of officers um, that's being proposed, both in terms of its its appearance, but also it, its its overall form, massing, um, materials, and everything else. Um, and then um, the uh, the point on um, net carbon zero. I mean, the application is supported by a sustainability report, um, and it has demonstrated compliance with the relevant policies. Um, and again, obviously, we're here making a, a planning decision against the, the relevant policies, and they've demonstrated it's acceptable. I mean, there is an interlink in, in what you said with the, the, the kind of impacts on, on Ranella House in terms of daylight sunlight. And obviously, that's a judgment you'll have to make tonight in terms of what that relationship is and whether you consider it to be acceptable. Um, and finally, I, I mean, on the on the detail, well, there was a, a you know, the, the application is supported by a full range of plans, a full range of supporting documents. Um, the presentation tonight was to summarise um, what's being proposed and, and re-familiarise everyone with, with the, the details that are in the application have been available to see. Um, so obviously my presentation can't show you everything that has been submitted tonight. Um, but, um, you know, if there are specific aspects that you, you need clarity on, I will seek to um, seek to talk you through those. And I did include some uh, kind of reserve slides if you like in case there were further questions drilling down into the the relationship and the massing so if if i've got some specific pointers certainly um try and help you in terms of of, of what you need clarification on 
Um, if I, if you, if you don't mind, Chair, just a quick one, a quick follow up, which is I would really like to be talking um, through this top floor, uh, which I don't understand. You know that there are issues with the top floor, people losing views, light, space, and so on, enclosure. Um, how, how necessary is the top floor? But we don't know what what is the layout of the top floor. I mean, you know, apart from anything else, times have changed post COVID. Are we going to have empty shops and then nowhere to, for people to live? So I don't know. But uh, please talk me through the top floor and reassure me and that there's no way that this can be reduced. Um, so the top floor you'll see in section here, so on the right hand side is the King's Road. Um, so the top floor um, you'll see is a setback story at the front um, and is the, the point furthest away to the rear. So it's approximately 17 metres away from Ranella House, that top floor. Um, and um, you know, in terms of of whether it's needed or not, I mean that's not that's that's not really the question before us tonight. The question is whether the building, as proposed by the applicant, is acceptable in planning terms. That's both in terms of its its design and its impact on the neighbours. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, there was a debate earlier about um, whether or not um, reducing the um, the uh, extent to which that top story goes uh, back towards Ranella House could change the impact on living conditions, but ultimately we're not here to decide amendments on the application and, and seek amendments. We we have an application and, and, and we understand what the impacts of this scheme are and the decision is whether or not um, those impacts are considered acceptable. Um, but do you understand the, the, the position of the top floor and its layout through looking at this section or would it help if I showed you some floor plans as well? Um, I don't really understand what's going in those office spaces and I don't really understand what's going in the mixed town use, whatever it's called, space. So I, I'm a bit confused about the internal spaces. Um, maybe that doesn't matter. So the the, um, the second, third and fourth floors in this section are denoted as office space. So they will be offices, office space. The first floor um, is denoted as flexible town centre uses. So clearly we are in a, a slightly different position here whereby the government has introduced new use class E, which covers all town centre uses. Um, so whilst historically we were um, we had different use classes relating to different town centre uses, um, clearly there, there is now within the planning system flexibility around the different uses that are appropriate in town centres and the ability to move between those uses without the need for planning permission. So you know, I, I think we ultimately we have to we have to understand that flexibility in um, commercial buildings in town centres is is the the way the planning system is now set up, and is is obviously the way the applicants come forward because the application has come forward because ultimately, um, you know, they they need that flexibility to ensure that um, appropriate uses can be put in and uses it can be used without having to go back through the planning system. I mean, all I would say is. Is the salmon the, the concern, my sorry, my specific concern is particularly that first floor um, space opposite Ranella House um, is one of those flexible town centre uses, potentially a restaurant, because that could, you know, that could impact on them hugely. And that, you know, what what are the likelihoods? We've been told that's not what they intend, but they may need to take that if they can't let the rest of the space because we're in very strange times. Yeah, but likewise any of the site could become a restaurant because that's within class E, which is within the same use class as um, as retail. So, you know, I think you have to you have to think about this as any town centre use could operate from from this building other than uh, obviously what we have sought to do um, is, is ensure that the, um, the ground floor frontage onto King's Road um, is retained in what were the old A1 uses, so A1, A2 or A3, um, because obviously that is important for the vitality and viability of the town centre as we see it. All right, thank you. Okay, actually, <clears throat> Tom, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in ahead of you. I just have a quick question for Mr. Lomas, actually, following on from what Councillor Dent Code said there, um, would it would it be possible for us to do something that 
I'm, I'm thinking here of the section which is up in front of us now, which is the first floor, which obviously at the rear backs immediately onto round their house. Now, is it possible to have something that um, could be a condition, supposing, supposing there was a restaurant use at that level, because I, I can imagine that that would actually be something which which could impact the amenity of people living living next door. Is, is, is there some way that we could control that? I, I don't know, um, Mr. Lomas, is, is, uh, so is that something that could be addressed? What do you think? So can I, uh, sorry, James, I'm going to ask you a question just to clarify, yeah. but, but in terms of the, yeah. the potential impact you've highlighted, uh, what, what impacts are you thinking? Noise, smell, um, or uh, uh, just so I'm clear, and then, then I can perhaps answer the question. Well, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, think, I'm thinking in quite a general way from a, a resident's point of view of uh, you have smell, noise, even even light in the sense of something that if it was open very late might you might have windows and things that, that were would be lit up you know quite late in the evening um I, i'm thinking in a general way uh, what what do you reckon so i mean effectively in, well i'll answer the light question first and foremost is obviously the windows at the rear as on all levels um, will be provided with these screens that are there for privacy purposes, but they will also have a benefit of meaning there's no um, light directly shining out from those. And 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 I, I mean, I I would say that the light from a restaurant would be no different from the light from an office. And actually, you know, the way we well, the way we all did work um, when we went to the office is is. Uh, in, in 21st century wasn't a nine to five scenario and actually offices are, tend to be open 24 hours a day so uh, you know in terms of the the impacts uh, office versus restaurant I, I would say they're probably probably the same um, and obviously the intention isn't that there's any kind of external spill out here it's all contained within the building um, so I, I'm not really uh, my, I, I guess my, my view and, and my advice to you is that the, the very nature of, of the building and the way that they've designed it would contain any uses within it and the impacts of the, the kind of town centre uses plus the conditions we've got um, requiring, um, you know, controls over services and plant um, should be sufficient to um, to control that. So condition 17 as well also deals with any extraction equipment that might be needed. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Bennett, Tom. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> just two, two quick questions, Ms. Lomas. Um, first one on uh, electric vehicles. I think we should generally sort of especially in larger schemes uh, should be looking for provision of electric vehicle charging points but uh, the applicants mentioned that the car parking is actually outside of the application so is that correct and would it thus be inappropriate to to require any ev charging points yeah so um i um so the the the, the car parking level is within the application there are changes at that level that are occurring as part of this scheme um, mm -hmm. So, so th the option is there. I mean, our transport um, officers took the view that um, because it's an existing parking provision and it related to the residential use, which th the residential use itself isn't in scope of the application. So whilst the parking is, the residential use is not, that they weren't going to ask for it. But, um, you know, I think you could legitimately make an argument mm -hmm. that the parking spaces that are being reprovided are within the application and therefore um, applying the policy to them um, could be seen as, as appropriate if yeah. you you so thought. So, I mean, just a reminder of what the policy position is, it's 20% it's active and 80% passive um, in the intent to publish a London plan. Um, but so, so really, uh, you know, I think 
the, the car parking itself and the changes to it are within the scope of the application, whilst the residential use that they are providing the parking for is not. Therefore, you could, if you want, um, have conditions to that effect. That's that's good to know. And the uh, I know I know the applicant has stated that the parking will be for residential use, and and I've no doubt that it will be. But is that actually a condition within the planning? Could at some future date the use of that parking change? Um, is that just what's stated, or is it, or is it sort of a, a legal requirement? That is. Um, so I'm just checking. I don't believe we have a recommended condition to that effect. But I'm just double checking. So, I mean, okay. Yeah. So it's it's not a condition on the on the um, in the current recommendation. Okay. Um, so effectively, under this planning permission, should it be approved and built out, you know, there's no controls over um, who could use that parking. Okay. Well, it, it, in which case, I think that that um, encourage me, encourages me further in that view. And if um, Chair and, and other committee members were so willing, I, I would suggest we put that as a condition that maybe not a specific number, but that officers uh, engage with the applicant on that and, and agree an appropriate level of electric charging provision. Um, so I'll... I'll leave that with you chair but the uh, second thing i just wanted to come back on w one more time uh just so i can really really understand it um what is the can you explain once more what the impact of specifically uh daylight is on the flats which will be worse worst affected and uh, why we believe that that is um acceptable in this case yeah so um so Overall, um, I think it's it's fair to say for a, a major development in terms of the impact on daylight, the scheme is very high performing. If we do compare it with the other major applications we've we've had before this committee, it's actually it's actually very high. Um, most windows um, are generally um, generally pass the criteria. There are some windows that are very marginal in terms of so if we think VSC specifically. The number of windows that don't. I think there are four um, four flats in the. Um, I guess if you were looking at the elevation of Rana House, it's in the bottom right hand corner that are the most affected, um, and are really the ones that required a lot more scrutiny than um, than than the others. And but actually, from an officer's point of view, um, we're taking a, a balanced view on it. The, the, the losses overall were beyond the 20% losses. So, so those flats, they were in in the 30% losses, um, which is obviously above the 20% where BRE suggests it would be noticeable. But the retained levels are um, actually quite high for an urban environment. Um, and uh, so broadly in the, the kind of 18% and actually 22, 23% um, um, range and so so as with other schemes we've looked at it in terms of you know bre guidance it's there to be applied flexibly it's designed for a suburban environment um, where the retain levels that it suggests are are very much what's acceptable in a suburban environment and the type of development you have um, and actually 80 you know the, the lowest are around 18 percent in terms of the retained vsc and and that's that's typical particularly in historic um, urban environments like this borough um, and, you know, obviously um, people have, have desired to live in this borough and within properties that receive that amount of daylight for a very, very long time. Um, so, so I think in terms of the overall picture, one, it performs very well, but actually where there's the greatest impacts, we're satisfied that actually they're, they're within a range that, that we can accept uh, whilst not complying with BRE, still... Uh, essentially as we need to assess what the policy says it, it retains acceptable levels of, mm. of daylighting to those properties yeah i mean I've, I've certainly seen much lower than that on other applications but um so those ones which are worst affected that sort of 20 18 20 percent what are they what are they currently um i don't have the daylight sunlight report in front of me so i can't tell you but um 
the losses are around 37 percent okay. and the retained value is around 18 percent um so i but I, I don't unfortunately i don't have the report in front of me um and uh i, I can't, unfortunately as i reported just before the meeting mm. i'm having technical issues getting onto our system so can't pull it up to give you the answer to that uh, okay well that's that's okay but the losses are generally around 37 percent um yeah so to the most effective win affected windows it ranges from around 31 percent to 37.7 percent 38 okay 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 um that's that's very helpful thank you thank you chair okay uh thank you tom um now <clears throat> I'm afraid, Mr. Mr. Connell, I know you would like to ask a question, but unfortunately, in this part of the meeting, we've moved on to a part where only councillors can ask officers questions. So unfortunately, although we've obviously heard what you've said and myself and colleagues have pursued the points that you've made, you can't actually come in and ask a question at this stage. I, I, I'm sorry about that. but. That you, you'll understand that we have to have uh, our conventions as to, as to how we run our meetings. Um, are there any other questions for officers? I, I think actually at this point, actually, Councillor Idris, uh, well, uh, did you want to ask officers a question? Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, one of my questions yeah. has, al has already been answered, uh, but my other question okay. is, and, I, and, I, and that could be just a pure ignorance from my side. Um, do we have a measurement for enclosure? Do we have any kind of do we measure enclosure how how much i mean the same way we measure daylight sunlight yeah do we have do we have a sense of that and no. and, and, and if we do can you elaborate a little can you explain to me where was the, where were the um the the flats uh wh where are they now and where will they be after the building is erected yeah so there is no um kind of technical measure of of enclosure it's it's a judgment call effectively um for the decision maker to take um and obviously the the policy is um well the test in the policy is about a harmful sense of enclosure um i think uh, you know obviously enclosure in itself isn't harmful but but there can be a degree to which um uh, a, a property or a window is enclosed where it where it becomes harmful and and ultimately that that's a judgment call on on behalf of the decision maker you know officer's view is is actually the the relationship here when you have regard for the fact that the the closest point that's eight meters is mm -hmm. is similar um albeit we you, you know you've heard that it's closer at the eastern end to the existing first floor so that there is an existing relationship there the additional massing really comes from um from above and um you know the the design of the building with the stepped um facade actually addresses that in our view so it steps back to 11 meters then 14 meters and 17 meters and that provides a degree of relief and of course in the lower flats as you were looking up you would never appreciate the full walls of the step backs because of the of the, the angle of view um so it would gradually step away um and uh, so we've we've taken the view that, that that actually it is acceptable um and you know particularly for the i guess the the challenge much like the um the the, the daylight considerations i, I think the 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 most effective properties are those first two levels and they're the ones that you know we've obviously taken a a, a very close look at and and considered whether or not we think that's acceptable uh, i think the levels above that um for, for certainly from from my point of view because of the distance is involved and obviously they're not experiencing the full height of the building it would be hard to argue that that's harmful um but then it's just a judgment call around those those lower two floors Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Wala. Um, okay. Um, well, I think before we move on um, to make a, a decision, I think it might be a good point. I think um, Ross Fletcher, I think, Ross, did you want to make a point? Um, Hello, Chairman. Yes, Ross Fletcher. Yes, hi. Ross, uh, just, just to explain. Um, 
Uh, Ross Fletcher is a, a solicitor in the legal department, and I think he just maybe want to make a clarification or make a point. So, Ross, please go ahead when you're ready. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I just wanted to touch on the um, discussion point around a uh, possible Section 73 application uh, being made for a new proposal um, regarding the rear elevation of the rear wall. Um, I just wanted to confirm to members that they cannot take this into consideration. Um, it's not a material planning consideration. So any future applications cannot be taken into account and uh, members ha can only consider the application that's before them tonight. Okay, <clears throat> no, that, that, that's, uh, that makes sense to me. Um, if I can just make absolutely certain that we've got this right. So clearly um, an applicant, an applicant can make, make applications um, any term, time they like, and, and they can uh, bring in amendments and different applications. That's their right but we must consider what is in front of us. And also, um, while people may, may very well be interested in what somebody has said they intend to do, that isn't a material consideration in planning terms, and that mustn't be part of our decision-making. Is, is, is that right, Ross? Yeah. That, that's correct, yes. Yeah, okay. No, that's, I, I think that's a good point, and I think it's an important point to make, actually. Okay, um, well, colleagues, um, are there any final questions to officers at all before we move to make a, a decision? No, okay, in that case, I think we can uh, we can move on. Um, hey, well, maybe... Cha Chairman. Sorry, who, oh, sorry. who's that? This is um, uh, Councillor Bennett. Um, I was oh, uh, sorry, Tom, I couldn't, uh, sorry, I didn't recognise your voice. Yeah, <laughs> no Tom, problem. go ahead. No problem. No, I was just going to ask about um, uh, whether yourself and the committee thought we might add a condition on electric vehicle charging points. I'd agree with that, Chairman. Okay, uh, no, that's a good point. Um, actually, Mr Lomas, can, can you help with that? Is that something that we could sensibly do? Yes, Chairman. So, um, as I was uh, set out in my answer before, I think it is reasonable to, uh, within the realms of this application, to add such a condition, um, provided the condition is worded to align with yeah. um, the uh, the planning policies to which it relates. So that would be to um, secure a twenty percent passive, uh, twenty percent active provision, and eighty percent passive provision. Okay, all right. Uh, well, okay. In that case, um, I think I, I I would certainly support that as well. So I, I think, uh, okay. So um, thank you. In in terms of uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, in terms of making a, a decision this evening, I mean myself, I I I feel that the I think the officers' report actually um, sets out the issues here very well. Um, I think that the the conclusion that the re officer's report reaches at 6.99 um, personally, I, I think is, is 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 a fair one. Um, I think this is this is clearly a building which requires redevelopment uh, and modernisation, um, and I note that. Um, I think particularly the, the front facade facing Kings Road and, and, and Royal Avenue, I, I think is actually, personally, I, I feel is, is it attractive and, and among modern buildings in RBKC, I, I, I think it's, it, it's, it actually is a fine building. Um, I think in relation to the rear, I think that we have to be as as our comp my conversation with Mr. Uh, Fletcher has just stated, and we have to be very careful about how we handle that. But I think if were the applicant, um, the owner, to bring forward uh, another um, amended application, slightly adjusting 
uh, the rear of the building. I think what would happen is that planning officers would have to consider that on its merits, but it's it's not something that we really can take account of this evening, and it's not a material consideration um, as 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 uh, as it goes. Um, but overall, I, I think this is a, 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 a personally, I think this is a sensible scheme for the redevelopment of a major site on the King's Road, and I would. Um, personally, I, I noted in the pack, uh, Cadogan Estate, obviously an important freeholder in the area, I think they have they have supported the application. And I think we've heard that actually at least uh, one gentleman representing residents locally has also supported it. So I think despite, despite reservations and concern, of people living in Ranley House, which I totally understand, I would suggest that on balance, this is is actually probably uh, a, a sensible a sensible application which we should support. Um, but obviously, it's up to all of all of you to uh, decide if you if you agree with that assessment. Um, is there anybody before we actually have a formal vote? Is there anyone who would actually like to like to particularly make a, a comment or point about this? Colleagues? Uh, Chair, if I may, I just wanted to ask something about a clarification. Yes, certainly. Before we go forward. Yeah. About the um, about the added condition about electric charging. And I yes. was wondering, I mean, how many cars are they going to have in their garages i mean how is it is it a private garage is it a garage to for, for other for other cars to rent because we as a council we have we are actually pledging to have electric charging on the street available all the time and 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 as much as possible so i was wondering how how i mean will that be electric charging for only people using the building for people from outside i i don't understand well i think my understanding um councillor idris is that that's something that it would be it would be a new condition um which officers would negotiate with the applicant um and and i I, I, I think it would be as you describe. Um, I, I think that would be subject to negotiation. So that's uh, that would be the way that it would work. But if, but if, we, want, if we want to add a condition, I mm. would like to know what 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 is the, what is the what is the you know the purpose the use of it as opposed to I know electric charging is for charging for for but is is it is it for the residents for people who use the building only or is it a commercial type of thing well it, my understanding is that the, the the proposal is that the the retained parking and mm -hmm. I think the total amount of parking is reduced substantially yeah um that would be for people who lived in Ranley House, so it would be for for that. But I th I think that I th I think I think actually well uh, that okay. probably is a detail that should be allowed okay. up to officers. Actually, okay. I I know this is not you know I think I think Mr Lomas, do you want to just very quickly clarify that you've got your hand up? Yeah. So just very quickly, um, if you add a condition, it will relate to the 12 parking spaces mm -hmm. on the um, on this uh, image, you can see there's a kind of white level of basement. Yeah. Uh, there'll be 12 parking mm -hmm. spaces. And as the applicant explained, they are retained for residents who have existing parking spaces in, in Ranala House. So it will be for those retained for those residents because they have to reprovide it. OK, thank you. OK, all right. Um, Councillor Dentco, did you want to make a point? Um, I, I just wanted to, before we vote, can I just make a few broad points? Is that all right? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah I'm, I'm not. I'm really not happy with it, and I, you know, I don't see it as a binary choice between what we have at the moment or this current design. I think, I think we can do a whole lot better. Um, the, this idea that there's kind of almost too much light and space for the residents of Ranley 
house I find difficult and I do think some people are going to lose value of their homes I know that's not a planning consideration but um, I think personally we should um, consider it um, the the idea that somehow this is echoing the absolutely gorgeous Royal Hospital um, I think I find it mildly offensive it looks more like McDonald's across the road um, um, really I think it is way too tall uh, as many people have said um, it's really not net carbon. Um, when you're demolishing something, the um, the effect on Ranley House is, is grossly unfair. They're losing amenity, natural light and heat. Um, and, you know, we're in the middle of a, of a climate um, a climate crisis. Um, the loss of residential, I think, is indefensible. We would not be allowed to get away with that in North Kent. Um, more than anything else, I think it needs further work um, uh, um, and I agree with nearly everything that came out in the um, quality review panel. I think we should defer it, Chair. But as it is, um, I, 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 I'm really not happy with it. I don't think it's good enough. This is this is King's Road. This is King's Road, Chelsea, and this is Squires. And I really think they could have done a better job, seriously, um, for us. Or this is going to be there for a very long time. <coughs> so uh, that's that's where I am at the moment. Thank you, Chair. OK, um, well, thank, thank you, uh, Councillor Dancode. OK, well, colleagues, are there any other points anyone would like to make? Or I think I can perhaps move to a vote. OK, um, so um, if I can just ask Derek Taylor, just to be clear, I think I, I'm picking up from my colleagues that um, the electric charging points issue is something that we we feel needs to be included as a new condition somewhere. Um, if were we to, to to grant this, um, Derek, is that yeah? Is that all right? Um, yeah, yes, Chairman, you you, you can um, pr propose to grant with, with that uh, um, condition attached. That 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 would be a reasonable condition if the committee saw saw fit to choose that. OK, um, all right. Well, I, I, I think I, 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 I sense that there is definitely a consensus that we should we should suggest that. Um, if I can just ask Ross Fletcher, do you, Ross, do, do you have any other are there any other particular points that you think we need to note before we move to making a decision on this? <coughs> no, Everything's been discussed. No, good. All right. Well, in that case, um, colleagues, um, bearing in mind that we're going to have an electric charging points condition, um, as um, Councillor Bennett and Councillor O'Connor have suggested, um, the recommendation is 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 to grant. Um, if I can go down the table. Um, and I also I think uh, can I just make certain with officers um, so obviously there is going to be um, a section um, uh, uh, an undertaking uh, relating to this application if I can just make clear uh, are there any particular points that we have to clarify about that or be be certain about Um, I, I don't think so, Chairman. Everything's set out in the report. Um, uh, no. I guess okay. the, the only point is, is to, to note that the recommendation um, from officers to grant subject to the completion of the legal agreement, securing the matter yes. set out in the report. OK, all right. No, I, I just wanted to make certain that uh, there hadn't been alteration of any dates or anything like that. OK, so colleagues, um, in that case, the recommendation is to grant um, with um, that note that uh, has just been um, set out and also a new condition about electric charging points uh, as well. So I'm going to go down uh, the, the committee and ask if you're in favour of that recommendation or against it. Um, if I can start with Councillor Bennett, please. In favour, Chairman. Um, Councillor Dentcode. I'm against, Chair. Okay. Um, Councillor Idris. In favour, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor O'Connor. In favour. 
Thank you. And I am in favour as well. So uh, planning permission is granted um, for that. Um, thank you very much indeed, everyone. Um, quite a long evening, but thank you so much for your your comments. And uh, uh, that 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 concludes the meeting. Um, thank you very much, and good evening. Thank you.